All right, what's up everyone? Uh, so I was doing a little personal work. I've been transcribing this uh, book here and I realized there's a learning moment and we can have a little time to learn about the power of Vim and LaTeX combined. Uh, what kind of optimization it can give me on a daily basis. So this is what I'm actually doing. I'm transcribing this book. This book is on Indo-European grammar. It's like an old typewritten book uh, and I just scanned it. Um, and uh, so the part I'm doing right now is a text in Sanskrit and it actually comes from the Rig Veda. So there's a text here and you know it has these different stanzas and then it explains the text in a glossary right really it's it's written for people who don't know anything about sanskrit or indo-european languages it explains like each and every word um so that's the kind of thing i want to reproduce now i've already actually written the text out okay so that's that part i don't have to worry about so i already have all this done um but it you know it's a little bit of effort to do all this because you know you have all these uh fancy characters and you know escape sequences and you have to do all these accent stuff and whatever uh, and for the glossary what I'm gonna have to do uh, if I'm doing this if I'm doing this in word or something like that I basically have to copy and paste each and every word or at least rewrite them for the glossary because each and every one of the words barring repetitions is in the glossary um, so what are we gonna do to uh, make this super easy in Vim and LaTeX well as you can guess it's gonna be pretty simple but uh, yeah well let's go ahead and get into it now I'm going to start, I think, uh, first I'm going to get rid of this preview, we don't actually need it. Uh, but what I'm going to do at the beginning is I'm going to highlight all of this text, uh, and I'm just going to copy it into the glossary section, which you can't really see right now because of my uh, screen key or whatever, but uh, anyway, so now we have a copy of it. Now what I'm going to do with this, all of this, is I'm going to take it and I'm going to uh, put each and every one of the words on an individual line. And that's going to make it easier so when I actually, you know, do the modifications on everything. Uh, but before I do that, I want to get rid of all of these, um, you know, double slashes at the end of lines to make new lines. Because I don't need any of that crap. So I'm going to highlight everything in visual mode. Uh, and I think the easiest way to delete them is, uh, you know, enter a command, enter a normal command. Uh, and what I'm going to do is do dollar sign $x, dollar sign $x, and that's going to get rid of the last two characters on each one of these lines. So now we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll actually go in and, you know, delete each and one of these uh, extra spaces just, you know, for fun. Uh, just because, you know, I don't know. There's probably an easier way to do that, but uh, who cares. Um, we don't have to optimize everything, you know. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do uh, to... Actually, maybe I should make this so it's, like, a little more centered. I don't want to use Goyo because it does have the, um, so we'll put this somewhere in the center. Okay, so the next thing is kind of uh, a macro. And what this macro is going to do is it gonna, it's going to take a word and put it on its own line. So I'm going to start recording. Let's say I'll record it as uh, S. Um, so I'm going to press 0 to make sure I'm at the beginning of a line. I'm going to press capital E to go to the end, the end of the first word. and Capital E is going to include things like slashes and brackets and stuff like that. It's everything that's not white space. Uh, I'm then going to press A to go into insert mode. Delete, uh, delete to the you know delete the car. Uh, excuse me, delete the space afterwards. Then I'm going to press return, uh, and so that ends me on the next line. Escape and Q to end the macro. So now if we run the macro, you should see that it will basically just take the next word and put it on its own line. So let's run that. I don't know 50 times. I don't know how many. Um, yeah, so that's gonna run We have left Great, so now this is doing all the work for me don't really have to worry about any of this um, So yeah, now we have all of our words on one line so that puts us I don't know maybe about halfway there So this is where the LaTeX portion is gonna come in now what I want it what I want to do now is I want to have a set like a set way of like defining each of these words so they're all in the same formatting and I think the easiest way to do that is actually have a, a LaTeX ma macro like a kind of environment you make for a glossary entry in this situation uh, in each of these glossary entries it's gonna have of course the word it's defining then some kind of definition and usually like an explanation of what's going on so it's there's sort of like three different arguments we want this macro to have uh, so let's go ahead and start thinking about this. Um, so I'm going to have a new command, and that's going to be my new macro. We'll call it like, I don't know, gloss entry. I assume that's not used already. Uh, and we're going to say it needs three arguments. Three, you know, because the word, the definition, and the explanation. 
Um, so where are we going to put those things? Um, so remember to call the arguments you just use like number sign and then a number. Um, so first we'll have uh, number sign one, which will be the actual word. Then we'll have let's say a line that goes to the definition, and the definition is going to be in you know parentheses or not parentheses uh, quotation marks. And then maybe we'll have um, I don't know just sort of a space um, or maybe. Yeah, we'll just have like a space and then like number three if it exists and we'll see what that looks like and uh, oh, we do need to have a new line as well. Okay, so that should be it. So this is going to be a new command. It's going to be gloss entry. Um, so what we're going to want to do now is uh, actually first off, I want to let's see how many words we have. So 66 to okay, so just around 100. Okay, great. Um, okay, so what we're going to want to do is put all these words in this syntax. So that should be pretty much, some, oh, why did I turn my screen key off? Let me turn that back on. Um, so we're gonna make another macro and let's say we'll call it G for gloss entry. And so we're gonna do capital I to go in insert mode at the beginning of a line. And we're gonna say gloss entry. And then we're gonna open my, our brackets. Uh, and of course the word is actually going there. So go, going to go in there so we don't need to change it. And then I'll do capital A to get after it and we'll put uh, you know close the brackets there and then I'll put my little guide character um, so this sequence of characters you know, whenever I press space space uh, you might know from my other videos LaTeX or yeah LaTeX searches for this deletes it and goes to whatever one's next I'll show you what it looks like later um, so now that that's done we're gonna go escape uh, go down the line and then we'll just in the macro there okay so now if we run that again we're gonna have, great, now it works on the other line. Now if we run it 99 more times, oh geez, it looks like it's gonna take forever, but it's going to repeat the uh, macro on each and every one of these entries, all 100 however times. Um, yeah, blame the, blame the screen casting, that's why it's taking so long. But uh, yeah, just imagine typing all of this out though. Um, but if you do this on your own computer, it's gonna be pretty quick, so you don't have to sweat it too much. Um, but uh, as it gets to the end, you will see, you will be very happy that you have saved all of that uh, effort. Um, so yeah, now we have everything in particular entries. Everything should look pretty fine. Um, and we can, you know, check everything out. Uh, it's to the formatting, Every, you know, the second, the definition is in the uh, quotation marks, stuff like that. Um, so now we don't have to worry about anything, really. We're at the point where, uh, yeah, we're pretty much all set. All right, so final addendum. Uh, I've, go, I've gone ahead and started to fill these in, uh, just copying the book, more or less. Uh, remember, of course, that you can make changes to the macro. Let's say I want, uh, for example, let's, want, let's say uh, I want the uh, word to actually be bold. Uh, so if I just throw that in, maybe I should actually spell the command right. If I put it in text BF, now all of our words are bold, something like that. If we want, you know, extra spacing or something, I don't know. Um, so we want a new line or something like that. Uh, so that's going to add in a new line. So you can pretty much easily change it. Um, so anyway, this is just a minor optimization, and I'm actually going to be using this a couple times because I'm not just uh, copying Latin text or excuse me, Sanskrit text, but I also have a Latin text, a Hittite text, Greek text, a bunch of other stuff that I'll have to do. Um, I'm, thinking of ways to like skimp on typing all this stuff out but there's not really much of a way of doing it uh, but anyway so this video is just an example of how you can use vim and LaTeX, or you know you can replace them with whatever extensible text editor you want um and you can get a whole lot out of it so this is uh this it's not a meme guys it's not a meme so stop pretending it's a meme because it's not uh so anyway uh thanks for watching hope you learned something and uh see you next time